Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Everyone, Luke and Mouse Prime here, so it is time for the next episode of Movie Didn't Need a Sequel. And today, guys, I'm going to be covering what, what is ironically a, a sequel, guys, in one of my favourite franchises of all time. And and this is also a third instalment, guys, and this would have to be none other than 2003's The Matrix Revolutions. So, so in summary, guys, what do I think of the Matrix franchise? So, I, of course, absolutely adore the first movie. You know, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Probably my favorite movie involving, like, a simulation sort of genre in that kind of way, really. And I'm also going to be honest, guys, and admit that I'm also one of those people that likes and defends the first two sequels being Matrix Reloaded and the Matrix Revolutions. Now... I won't deny that these two sequels do have problems, in my opinion, guys. I do have problems with, with these two sequels, but but I think they're both underrated movies, which are really good. So, yeah. Now, so so why do I think Re Revolution didn't need a sequel, guys? So, so I think, now, that the ending had a pretty, you know, tolerable and decent way to wrap up the story. Even though I think there were some questionable things about it, so, I mean, I mean... One of my biggest problems with the movie is probably that, that Trinity was killed off a second time. I, I definitely he did not like that about a movie, really. I think she deserved better, but... But when it comes to the ending, you know, um, the movie has a pretty great um, mo movie ending, really, because, like, for example, you've got the final fight between Neil and Agent Smith, and that is probably easily, in my opinion, my favourite part of the, of the entire franchise. Probably easily, in my opinion, the best scene of the, fi of the films, really. And, yeah, like... It's the one scene that I love to rewatch the most when I am rewatching Revolutions. And yeah, it's just really amazing, really. And just like the choreography and the intensity, just absolutely phenomenal, really. And wow. And and Aja Smith is, is, is such a phenomenal villain. Even though in this movie he only has about two scenes, he's still a phenomenal villain, one of my favourite villains of all time. And I. If it was, if I was also to do other things better this movie, I'd also probably give the main characters, you know, Neil, Trinity, and Morpheus more screen time, as well as Smith, and yeah. Um, but I think it's a very good way to wrap up the story, because at the end of the movie, Neil, of course, can't live without Trinity, so he sacrifices himself to, by allowing Smith to be, to assimilate him, because because he can't defeat Smith, because Smith is, is unstoppable. And... Outside the Matrix, um, the, the machines send a surge of energy into Neo's body, which causes all all of these Smiths, including the Neo Smith clone, and of course the, the Oracle version of Smith, because he's similar to the Oracle, he causes, he causes all of them to be destroyed. And it sacrifices Neo's life in the process. Although one thing I think is questionable is that um, the movie didn't exactly confirm if Neo's actually dead or not, because... Because in Neil's final scene where he's, his body is being, being carried away by machines respectfully because they respect him for stopping the war. Um, you know, we do see his point of view with a golden vision, so we don't know if he's alive or not, or dead, we don't know. But yeah, I think it was great to have a story because, you know, because due to Neil sacrificing himself to destroy Smith, it allows the Sentinels to withdraw from attacking the city of Zion, and the war's over. So yeah, the war is finally over, guys, and yeah, pretty decent ending there, really, and... Those who want to leave a matrix are allowed to as well. So that's pretty good. And now it's going to wrap it up, yeah. Absolutely. And the piece will last as long as it can, yeah, according to the Oracle. And one other thing of oh, I think is pretty nice closure as well is how the final scene of a movie, guys, where Oracle sat in the park and she meets the architect and then of course the program called Sati and Seraph. I like how in that scene the green filter which is seen in the Matrix's scenes is no longer there. I think it's definitely a very nice way to tell that, you know, the war's over by doing that, really. Very nice detail there. And as far as I'm concerned, guys, this, in my opinion, is the true end to the Matrix franchise. Absolutely. But, unfortunately, of course, 18 years later, we got an absolutely abominable fourth instalment somehow. And that was none other than 2021's The Matrix resurrections oh my god this would have to be probably one of the all-time worst sequels i've ever seen in my life this was absolutely abominable guys and 
And I feel so foolish for having been excited for it, excited for this movie in the first place. Like, what the hell was I thinking? Because at first I was really hyped to see a fourth movie, guys. But one thing that I was bored about was was that it didn't appear to be bringing about Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus. So that was already concerning for me. When I saw the trailer, I was excited to check it out. But when watching the trailer, I started to go a bit concerned. Especially because it, it appeared to confirm Morpheus had been, been recasted. Which I was very angry about. I then saw a second trailer. I didn't post a reaction to it because I, I was concerned about our movie. I saw a trailer, I was even more concerned. So, yeah. Rightfully so. And I saw the movie, of course, when it came out, guys, on December the 22nd. I think it was, yeah, or something, I think, maybe. And upon seeing the movie, guys, I absolutely despised it with a burning passion. Like, oh my god, it was absolutely horrendous. Like, what the hell was this film? seriously like it was abominable from start to finish like and what's bad about it is it's basically just another disney wars the fast awakens where it undoes the happy ending of a, a previous movie in a very bad way because because this movie revolutions had a very nice decent ending which wrapped up the story pretty well in my opinion apart from you know killing off trinity a, a second time and also not giving full closure on neil's sacrifice by not coming he's actually alive or dead so yeah like it ruined the happy ending, really. And, like, honestly, what the hell was this movie? Because it was boring. It was confusing as hell. And I don't even call it The Matrix. I call it all it. I don't even call it to me Resurrections, guys. I call it Piss Erections. And yeah, it's a name, but I've called it ever since, you know, I first hated it. I've always hated this movie since I first saw it. It was just utter garbage. And... Besides anything good about a movie, you know, I guess probably that Keanu Reeves does a good, does a good performance as Neo. It won't mind for this movie ruin Neo because, because in this movie, guys, Neo is no longer a badass I loved in the first three films. He's instead an absolute coward. And yeah, they, they really ruined him. Like, because I appreciate this movie far more because at least it has the Neo I love, thankfully. What this movie also does with your or stupid guys, it also recasts both Morpheus and Smith. And yeah, like... And in my opinion, guys, Yaya Adult in the second was a terrible miscast with Morpheus. He completely lacked the charm and charisma that he had in the first three films. And as far as I'm concerned, guys, there's only one Morpheus and that's going to have to be none other than, of course, Lawrence Fishburne. As far as I'm concerned, guys, he, he's the only Morpheus to me. Always. Him only. Um, what the movie also does, which is also really bad, is it also, as well, brings back Agent Smith and recasts him. And I've already touched upon this in, in my angry rant about our movie, but Jonathan Groff, in my opinion, was a horrible, horrible miscast for a role. Like, he was just so terrible in the role and so cringy. And do you dare get me started on, on the way he yells, Mr. Anderson! Like, that's not how Smith said the line. He wouldn't say it in, like, a very loud way. That's not how Smith would say it. And, yeah, honestly, he was such a bad miscast. And, and like with Morpheus, guys, there's only one actor I know for Smith, and that's, of course, the one and only Hugo Weaving. As far as I'm concerned, guys, he always will be Smith. No one, in my opinion, will ever play Smith other than him, as far as I'm concerned. And also, the, the fact that, you know, they brought Matt Smith in the first place, that's also undoes Neil's sacrifice more, because, yeah, by bringing back Smith, who Neil destroyed in Revolutions, you're making Neil's sacrifice to end the war absolutely pointless. Oh, my God. So you make Smith defeat pointless. It's just stupid. And also, guys, you could possibly say the one good thing about this movie is it does bring back Trinity after her bad death in Revolutions. But, you know, this movie is probably an example of a movie which, you know, which brings her back only to ruin her because because in this movie, guys, she, she doesn't even, even act like Trinity. She's instead called Tiffany and she doesn't even know who Neo is. And... And she's also hardly in the movie because, yeah, despite being second board in the cast after Keanu Reeves, she, she's barely in the movie at all, which is ridiculous. And he doesn't, she doesn't become a Trinity we know until towards the end of the movie, which is just ridiculous. And and also, guys, they ruin it even more because at the end of the movie, guys, she turns into a Mary Sue because somehow out of nowhere, she knows how to fly. Like, are you kidding me? Like, how dare they absolutely ruin one of my favourite favorite female characters in cinematic history? Oh my god. So like even though she died in Revolutions, guys, I, this is this is the only Trinity to me, the one from Revolutions. Cause yeah, there's no way this Trinity will ever be a Mary Sue to me. No way. No way in hell. Oh my god, like what did we do in this movie? Like, what the hell was this movie? Oh my god. 
And you, you, you've also got a, a new villain called The Analyst, played by Neil Patrick Harris. And I unfortunately, he considers to be his worst role because he, he's a great actor. I consider it to be his worst role. Like, the twist of him coming up, of him being a villain, came out of nowhere. It was not explained at all how he became a villain. You know, it was out of nowhere, guys. It made absolutely no sense. And he wasn't even that good in a role, in my opinion. And also, the fact that, you know, after New and Trinity's death and revolutions, he, he used their bodies to bring them back. Like, really? Like, I refuse to believe the machines were, were carrying Neil's body away just to bring him back in this, you know, new Matrix. Oh, my God. As far as, I, as, far as I'm concerned, guys, they, they took his body away out of respect for him after, after he ended the war. Yeah, I refuse to believe they, they took his body away only to bring him back in this new Matrix. And the fact that he's in a new Matrix in the first place is ridiculous. Like, because... Because at the end of this movie, the Matrix is now a safe place where people are allowed to leave if they want to. Whereas in, in this new movie, it's now just, just a, a messed up place where, where it's still bad. Oh my god. See, honestly, right, you know, screw Piss Erections all the way, guys. I hate the movie, and I'm so glad I don't own it. And I'm not the one, one who hates it because many of my close friends hate it. For example, my favorite YouTube, Empire and Production, despised it. And many of my other close friends also hate it as well. There's even many who refuse to watch and I can't say I blame them. So, yeah, like, I mean, guys, if you guys have not seen Piss Erections, then please, for the love of God, do not watch it because you're just going to be heartbroken because it's utter crap, in my opinion. Like, just watch the only the first three films. So, yeah, like, I like to pretend, guys, I had a nightmare where I saw a very bad fourth Matrix movie which ruined everything that the first three films stood for. And, yeah, like, thank God there's only three films to me. As far as I'm concerned, guys, there's only three Matrix movies, not four. So, yeah. Like, honestly, screw Piss Erection all the way. It belongs in the garbage. Like, it's just utter rubbish. And, yeah. And if you want to hear my full thoughts on it, then please go watch my Angry Rant, which I did when I saw a movie. And the movie was so boring as hell, guys, but the, the many points of the movie, I actually shut it off to do something else. For example, guys, at one point... I shut off to go and get a drink, and even as well, guys, at one point, I even switched off so I could, I, I could film my review for Bumblebee, the Transformers movie, because if you guys can tell by my I review for Bumblebee, and also angry about the piss direction, I'm wearing the same jumper, so yeah, it's, it, it's because I filmed it on the same day. I was, I was so bored of this movie, I decided to take some breaks from it. I didn't finish it until around night time, and that's when I filmed my angry rant. So yeah, like, honestly, screw piss directions. Like... One of the most insulting sequels ever. One of the worst sequels I've ever seen in history of cinema. Like, it was just utter garbage. And yeah. Like, honestly, it was just trash. And it ruined, you know, the ending of Revolutions. Made it all pointless. It was just stupid. Like, I think this movie is an example of a movie alongside Disney, Disney Wars before Skywalker. In which you should make the villain stay dead. You know, because Wallace Skywalker brings back Palpatine and ruins the prophecy of the, of the Chosen One. But because this movie ruins the prophecy of Neil being the one to end the, the war. Like, even the Oracle has a quote which is, everything has a beginning has an end. Like, that's proof that this is the end of a franchise. And it is, in my opinion, the end of a franchise. So, I like to pretend, guys, that Matrix is only a trilogy. And there's even been people who think that, you know, uh, the, the first movie should have, should have ended the franchise. But... I don't really agree with, with that because, you know, I mean, do you guys realise that at the end of the first movie, the war was still happening? And at the end of the first movie, Neil makes a promise to the machines that he'll show them a, a world of peace, which he, of course, does in this movie because he ends the war. So, so yeah, I consider the ending of, of the first movie to be setting up sequels, really. And it's kind of like, you know, the ending of Spider-Man 2002, where, you know, it ends with, with Spider-Man, you know, web-swinging. And you can tell there's more stories to be told with Spider-Man, just like how you can tell... At the end of, you know, the first movie, you can tell there's more stories to be told with Neo. So, yeah. So, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, guys, I like to pretend that there's only three Matrix movies. And, yeah, and that's how it is for me. And I only own these three, guys. I flat out refuse to buy Piss Erections. I'm so humbled that, you know, I got them as, like, a Blu-ray box of just the first three films only. Because, frankly, Piss Erection wasn't, wasn't the sale in this box set. Unfortunately, I have seen it in my store on, on for sale, guys. And every time I've passed it, I've always given it a middle finger because I hate that movie with Burning Passion. So, yeah. Yeah, screw up me all the way. And, so, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, guys, there's only three Matrix movies, and, and I keep it that way. Absolutely. So, guys, this, this is me doing the next episode of Movie Didn't Need a Sequel. And today, guys, I was covering the Matrix Revolutions. Um, so, you know, drill, guys. Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to comment what you guys what do you think of Revolution? Do you think it ended the franchise or not? Tell me in your opinion in the comments below.
Also, be sure to join Team Plan by pressing subscribe and we'll be looking in the future. If you'd like to be a member, you can join me with a piece of logs or in the description. And I'll see you all later.